Hi folks, today I'm going to take you on a tour of the replicated software distribution platform. We're going to be uh, pretending that we're the company Slacker News, um, who produces a software product that is like Hacker News, but driven off of your internal Slack team. And um, we have just signed a new customer, and uh, we are going to go through the process of getting them configured on the platform, and uh, them downloading the software and installing it. Uh, using the replicated embedded cluster, which means that they don't have to have Kubernetes to run the Kubernetes application that Slacker News is distributing. So um, as we go through this, we're going to be looking at two different perspectives. We're going to look at the perspective of Slacker News themselves. Um, that's going to be on this desktop with the uh, light border and the on the browser and the dark terminal, and uh, the perspective of the end customer, who's going to be a company called Nitflex. Um, and Nitflex is going to um, have this virtual desktop when we're in, looking at what they're seeing. We have the light colored terminal, and we're going to have the darker uh, border around the browser. So. Let's get started with um, creating a customer for Netflix on the replicated vendor portal. Now this can be driven by um, the uh, command line tool or an API, um, or you can come right in here uh, and do it on your own. So we're gonna do it manually here um, today. I'm gonna say Netflix is our customer. We're going to assign them a release channel. And re what release channels are is just a way of connecting a stream of releases to a group of customers. So by default, we give you three. Stable for your GA releases, beta, your beta program, uh, and unstable for releases that are not ready to be released that you're using internally for testing and things like that. You can add additional release channels to support however you release your software. For example, you might have a long-term support channel for customers who want to upgrade a little bit more slowly and have some additional assurances of support. Or you might have some additional channels for internal use, like tied to feature branches for people to uh, install the software when they're approving a change. Um, let's just, you know, Netflix, fairly straight line customer. Let's put them on our stable channel. We'll have Kathleen at Netflix.tv um, as our customer contact. Now, we don't do anything with that email address. That is your customer, not ours. The only thing it's used for is um, it's a credential uh, for downloading a Helm chart in order to install with Helm because from your single release of your software, you can install in three different ways. You can install with a Helm chart, excuse me, your customer can install with a Helm chart, your customer can install with a graphical installer that wraps around that Helm install, and they can install with an embedded cluster that starts from a bare VM or group of VMs and installs a Kubernetes cluster dedicated to running your application. So um, we are going to um, also set this field called custom ID. This is uh, just connecting to our Salesforce ID for this customer so that we can uh, track that and do reporting. Um, Netflix has uh, purchased for a year, so we'll set an expiration date and we'll record them as a paid customer. So these different characteristics of their license are gonna be useful uh, and visible to the application uh, based on a, an in-cluster API that we provide called the replicated SDK. We're gonna set some licensing options, different entitlements that are related to the replicated platform. So can they get access to an air gap download? Can they um, upload support bundles so that you can uh, help them? And can they use that embedded cluster, which we are gonna use for the demonstration today? You can also set a set of custom entitlements uh, unique to your application. In this case, for Slacker News, um, their business model is built around the number of members in the Slack team. So not a bad idea for them. So we're gonna have a, a hundred as that just that default for what uh, Netflix bought. So let's save those changes. And we're gonna go over to um, the customer details page here. Um, and we're gonna get the installation instructions. Uh, if this customer were uh, sophisticated with Kubernetes and opinionated about how things install, they might want to use the Helm chart uh, installation mechanism. Um, and if they are um, a little bit less comfortable, uh, they're going to potentially want to use this embedded model. So let's use that. Um, we're going to 
uh, go through and I'll just copy each of these commands. You're going to probably have these in a welcome email or something like that uh, that you send along to them or a combination of their welcome email and, and your install documentation. Um, since I'm doing both sides here, I can just pop it all onto my clipboard. So um, let me now switch over to the customer's perspective. They're going to log into one of the machines that they have in their environment. Uh, And once they get on that machine, they're going to start the process of downloading and installing the software. So um, I'm going to run first that download command. It's going to give me a, a bundle that's going to include my license file uh, and uh, binary uh, for installing Slacker News. And, uh, and None of this will refer directly to Kubernetes. Um, it really will be an experience for that user, like they're installing a Slacker News cluster. Um, so they'll do a Slacker News install, and then it will spin up an admin console for Slacker News where they'll finish the installation. So give this a, a few more seconds to download, and um, then we'll, we'll move on to the next steps of doing the install. All right, great. So. I'll unbundle that. It has the Slacker News binary um, as well as the license file. So, and then we will do our install. Referencing our license file. And now what's happening is we're essentially turning, um, whoops, first we're going to enter in a password for that administrative console. And now we're turning this VM into a single node Kubernetes cluster running the Slacker News application. Now, it does not have to stay a single node cluster. At the very beginning of the installation process, we can add nodes into that cluster if we have additional virtual machines to do it with. Um, and uh, even if we don't install them right away, we have a, a cluster management capability so that if they need more capacity in the future, they can add nodes um, into that cluster. And you define different roles for those clusters and the version of Kubernetes that you're going to be using um, in an artifact that you distribute uh, with your software or as part of this overall bundle. So um, this takes a few minutes to run, you know, four or five minutes. I, I, I hate apologizing for five minutes to spin up a Kubernetes cluster, but I will. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm going to uh, pop over to one um, on another VM that I've already gotten partway there. Um, so this is the landing page for the embedded cluster here. It's um, just a reminder that uh, you know TLS isn't set up yet, so I'm going to get a warning. It even tells me how I might verify it if I want to make sure I'm getting the right bad certificate. Um, and then I can move on, accept that, and then I can set up the TLS for this admin console. The, the application itself uh, set up for TLS is, is actually something we do with that console. I'm going to just stay with the self-signed certificate to keep things moving here. And then I'm going to use that password that I provided as part of the installation process. And now I can um, start to adjust my cluster and add additional nodes to the cluster. Um, Slacker News, fairly lightweight, so I'm going to leave it be with just this single node and continue on to the rest of my installation. This first screen here. Um, you would define this as part of your application. It's a YAML file. It's included in the release that you send up to the replicated vendor portal. Um, and it allows you to have different types of fields as well as some validation. For example, if I were to just put news dot in here, that's not a valid host name. Um, so it's going to prompt me, hold me up from uh, entering that bad uh, host name. So I will just say news dot short rib dot app. And it's a short rib dot crdan at short rib.io. I'm going to scroll down. Um, I can have, um, you know, uh, radio buttons, check boxes, all the different things you might expect on a form. And um, also I can have some things happen conditionally. Um, so if I wanted to up, up, don't upload my own certificates, I certainly could by clicking upload and they give me file upload boxes. But I'm going to, again, just let this generate it for me. Um, each of these um, fields uh, is used to configure the connection to Slack. That's something that Slacker News needs. These would be things that were specific to your application. If you were building this, you might have this, you know, this screen could be very long, could be very short. Uh, the way I like to think about it is that you probably have somewhere in your docs or in a readme or something like that, a um, 
set of like a limited set of helm values that you would be like you must set these in order to install that's a great starting point for when you define this screen so let me just finish through here i've got i need to put in correct values because i've got some validation on these we also have a check on them um, as part of the installation process so once I've got all of those entered, I can hit continue here and I'm going to go on to running pre-flight checks. The pre-flight checks are about basically encoding those steps that you tell people. Here's the prerequisites before you do the install and making sure that they're going to be successful with the installation. You define these um, as part of your release. It's a YAML file. You define a bunch of information to collect, a bunch of tests to run against that. It's generally about the Kubernetes cluster, but also can be about dependencies, like we depend on Slack here. So we have a check that the Slack API is accessible and that the credentials we provided can log into Slack. And then you even you define these and you also define these messages uh, for whenever there's success, failure, or warning. And um, that can be really useful for helping people diagnose and solve the problem themselves. Like if I couldn't hit Slack here, it would tell me, hey, check your firewall, check network policies in your clusters, and here's a link to Slack status page, make sure Slack's up. So all my checks passed, um, I can click this deploy button. Actually, if all my checks passed, it just goes ahead and deploys in the background. So uh, it should be coming up shortly and be up and running. Um, I have uh, information here about the status. I can click details here. I can see, okay, um, one of the three services that's part of this isn't running right now. Cool. Um, I get some status information about the cluster that I installed and I have the um, update processing. I can configure automatic updates. By default, it's gonna be four hours, but I can change the cycle for checks and I can even have them some of them automatically up installed. Like let's say I'll automatically install patch versions because um, those seem safe. So um, we have a problem here, right? Slacker news is unavailable. Um, I need help from Slacker News for that. So I'm going to pop over here to troubleshoot and I'm going to collect a support bundle. This again is something that Slacker News has defined. Similar to the pre-flights, it defined a bunch of information to collect and some tests to run against that information. Um, and uh, the primary difference is that the information that's collected is then put into a file that the um, Net Netflix customer can share with Slacker News um, to get some help. And you can see here, some of those tests are showing me what's going on in this cluster. I've got some various failures here. Uh, this image isn't being found. Um, so um, it can start to help because you provide this information. It's part of your release. You can, again can start to help people solve their own problems here. Um, but it's possible they're going to need to submit a support ticket to you. So um, as part of that, you probably want the support bundle. Um, you can certainly have them download it, attach it to a ticket and whatnot, or um, they can just submit that right up to the replicated vendor portal. And when your team gets it, uh, as you know, one of your team members can pop over here to the replicated vendor portal um, and they're gonna be able to see um, through this troubleshoot uh, menu item here, the support bundles that have been uploaded. I've got a bunch of them that have been uploaded and uh, so um, we'll see this uh, Netflix one here and I can identify um, you know, what is wrong. I also get some nice information here from the telemetry um, that's collected as part of the platform. Um, one of the cool things about that telemetry is that it's super lightweight. It's almost all just gleaned from the information required um, to request uh, an upgrade and, or to identify if there's any updates available. Um, you can also, I'll pop over here to another customer um, and you can see it, you can provide some custom metrics as part of that. So we've got this customer here, engineering team, internal customer, um, and the daily and monthly users. So I can sort of loop that back to the licensing. I can even get notifications on changes to those custom metrics or really changes to um, various things that might be interesting. Kubernetes system upgrades, upgrades of the application, um, changes in the application status, right? If it becomes healthy or unhealthy. Um, so you can really start to get some information from here about how well your customers are doing, the experience they're having, um, and you can get notified on that. So um, that was what I wanted to show you, a little bit of a tour, uh, a little bit of an experience of both what happens for you as a software vendor and what happens for your customers consuming your software when you use the replicated platform. Uh, if you are interested in learning more, um, you can sign up for a trial 
uh, right on the replicated.com homepage. It's actually probably right up in the top navigation there if you're watching me on the uh, on the page here. Um, and uh, otherwise, um, you can also find me online. I'm CR Dant just about anywhere, and uh, you can shoot me a message, and I'll help out. Thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in, and hope we hear from you soon.